Hey guys, uh, it's been a while and I have been posting some new content in the community tab and I wanted to just start giving the updates as it relates to the strategy and the method of trading that I'm using. It has been working out quite well and it's a very, I would say, calculated way to trade. Once you understand it, it's quite easy to follow. And I'd say it's a very practical and logical way of trading as well. And it's as if you're basically trading along with the algorithm of the of the markets. So with that said, I hope, uh, I think this is the first time that we're engaging since the new year in terms of a video. I hope you've all had a great start to your year. You've all set your intentions for this year and are working assiduously towards that. I'm doing the same. I'm seeing results. And if you're not there yet, Remember not to compare yourself to anybody else. Everybody has their own journey to, to do. And it's just as I, as I would, as it is said sometimes, it's 1% better every day. Just get 1% better every day and you'll see the changes over time and the results over time. All right, with that said, you would have seen my charts especially since last week into this week i've started to add some updates to the community tab as i have been saying in terms of how the charts are marked up i want to just break down what the markups are how everything comes together and like basically how do you how do you get to understand the concept and the method of trading. It's strictly price action along with patterns and along with setups, especially. And it includes the 100 pick box that I have done a video on before. I have not included the charts that I've posted so far with the 100 pick box. I don't want to confuse you. I want to break things down so that by the time we get to that section, then you're clear as to how we got there. All right, so let's begin. You would have seen on the chart uh, an annotation that says I be high, I be low, which means the initial balance high and the initial balance low. So that's where I want to start today. The initial balance comes out of the open range, the opening range. And this should actually be saying the opening range, not open range breakout, but yeah, we'll continue. It should be, um, it starts from the opening range into the initial balance of the week. So what is the opening range? What is the initial balance? This would move. It has just killed the joke, but it's not a movie. As we know, there is a movie called Open Range. It's not the movie. So what is the open range, opening range? The opening range is, according to this website that I found on Google, it's, 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 I think, the simplest definition I saw, which is why I chose this one. The opening range is simply the high and low of a given period after the market opens. That's straightforward. This period is generally the first 30 minutes or the hour, first hour of trading. During this period, you want to identify the high and low of the day. That's by tradingsim.com. But as it relates to this style of trading, the opening range is basically the 
the opening range of the week is the high and low of Monday. That's it. So that's what you've been seeing being depicted on the charts that I'm posting. It's the, it's the high and low of Monday. It's as simple as that. So we basically just mark that range as soon as we get into Tuesday. All right, as it relates to the initial balance, which comes out of the opening range, according to shadowtrader.net, the price range resulting from the market's trade during the first two 30-minute periods of the regular trading hour session. To break that down as it relates to this style of trading, it is the initial, the initial balance is the combined high and low of Monday and Tuesday. So for example, if Monday sets the range, which is the initial range for the week, Tuesday may have gone a little bit higher or a little bit lower. So whatever the, the high, the extended high is for Tuesday or low, we include that and whatever the highest high and the lowest low between Monday and Tuesday is, that, it, that now becomes the initial balance for the week. So already you would realize that there's a day one and then there's a day two already set up for a day three setup. All right, so we're going to continue. All right, so just to give an illustration of what I'm referring to. This is Monday. This is open range high, the open range low. It's as simple as that. Then when we combined Monday and Tuesday, Tuesday extended the range lower. And so the high of Monday is the highest and the low of Tuesday is the lowest. So in combination, it's this is the initial balance high, this is the initial balance low going into Wednesday and the rest of the week. Now the market does one of three things, three, three things. It either breaks out and trend, or it breaks out and reverses. It pulls back to give you a false reversal. And it can break out and consolidate. I'll expand on that. So that basically means that we have our opening range, high, low. I just added this. Normally, I would not have this. I would have just had the initial balance, high and low, because it would have negated this. And... This initial balance should actually be here. My apologies, because it's a combined high and low. So Monday's high is higher than Tuesday's high. Low, Tuesday's low is lower than Monday's high. All right, so this would have been initial balance high, initial balance low. Would have scrapped this. But just for the sake of uh, demonstration. So this is an example of a breakout and trend where price broke the initial balance high would have broken here as well. And the trend continued, it trended up, it, there was no reversal. And the next day it continued the same trend. Another example on the U US dollar CAD of the breakout and consolidation using the initial balance. So we have the initial balance high, which is the high that was extended in Tuesday. And the law of Monday remains as the opening range and initial balance low. When price got to the initial balance low, it tapered off and consolidated. Yes, there was a breakout, but it failed and came back to consolidate just below the open ba the initial balance range. So uh, I'm sure there's another example here of the reversal, right? So on EuroCAD, we have the initial balance low, the initial balance high. Price on Tuesday extended up into the initial balance high. We had a breakout, but the breakout failed. While we say it failed, price reversed the moment it broke above the initial balance high. Gave us an M pattern almost a head and shoulders, not almost, it's a head and shoulders, and price fell off. So we had a reversal. So we had a breakout, we had the reversal. So the three things that the market does, it breaks out and reverse, or it breaks out and trends, or it breaks out and consolidates. So that's the idea of the breakout and the uh, how price behaves when it gets to the initial balance high. 
Right, so characteristics of the behavior at these levels. Price becomes extremely sensitive at the initial balance high and low of the week. These are areas for potential midweek reversals or breakout and continuation trades. One of the largest moves of the week come out of breakouts of the initial balance or reversals at the initial balance high and low. They give high of week and low of week trades, which are really large moves in the market. So what you'll find is that price will tend to go from one extreme to the next, meaning if the high was taken, you'll tend to see a reversal most of the time, most breakouts fail. And because it's a trap for breakout traders, basically. So breakout traders may, mainly trade at highs and lows, whether it's swing highs, previous days high, previous weeks low, whatever the high or low is, they tend that's where they tend to take their trades at places where there is so-called uh, resistance and support. So having that bearing that in mind, traps are set at these areas where those traders can be trapped going long or short. So you'll have the breakout thinking that Price is going to actually continue in the trend that has been trending for the last two, three days, two and a half to three days. Most times there's a trend and it is said that the trend is our friend. It is not always our friend. Once you're catching the move from the beginning, then it's our friend. But if you're being caught in the middle or at the end of the trend, then you're going to be trapped. So the breakouts at these levels, give them, give the, induce traders, breakout traders to enter positions. So their 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 stops, their buy stops or sell stops are triggered. They're triggered into the market. You get some huge bullish or bearish candles that gives the impression that price is going to continue in that direction. And then as fast as you can see that happening, it's the same way you see price reversing. So a small pullback and then a, another push to test that higher or low and then price that reverses really fast. So that's the idea coming out of, especially the breakout and reversal behavior. Yes, sometimes it breaks out and trends, but for the majority of the times, you'll find it, that it will be a breakout and reversal because most breakouts fail. So coming back to the fact that it will be a high of week or a low of week uh, trade, that's because the initial balance tends to set the high or the low of the week. So, for example, Monday would have set the opening range. Tuesday will probably extends the range. So now we have, for example, if we're looking at Tuesday extending the range higher, now we have a high of the week because the week has begun. So we have a high of the week and we have Monday's low as a, still a low of the week. So we have a high of week, low of week set so far. Whatever happens on Wednesday will determine how far it extends. Or if it's going to be an inside day, maybe nothing happens. Uh, so we have a high for Tuesday, which is a high of the week. Monday's low remains the low of the week. Say, for example, Wednesday uh, triggers the initial balance. That's Tuesday's high, but then reverses. What you can most times expect is that price will go back to the low of the week, which is Monday and trigger the stops that are there as well, as well as stopping out traders who are already in long positions there. So that's the idea of that. And you'll find that these are really large, but very, very fast moves, just like gold did today. All right, so questions to ask yourself when looking at the initial balance and the opening range. What's the high of low on Monday? So we annotate that on the charts. Does Tuesday extend the range of Monday's high or low? What's the range in pips of the initial balance? So the breakout trend or breakout reversal can be extensions of this range. It tends to form a box, a rectangle. And this can give you a measured move, for example, two to four times the, the range of that box. So if the high and low of Monday are about, for example, on gold, it can be up to 300 pips. What you can anticipate is that you can anticipate at least maybe two to four times. Well, in a sense like that with the initial balance, 
maybe one two times the two times expansion on that range. If you're looking at, for example, which I will go over like a first green day, a first red day, where you look at the consolidation into the close of the day, that range, that rectangular range, can be two to four to even six, seven, eight, nine, ten times the range. So it depends on the type of trade that is happening on that day. Is there a major red news on the calendar on the day of the breakout for the trade setup? We need to be aware of this. We don't want to be trading just before the news or we don't even want to be trading the, the news most of the times because you don't want to have margin margin issues and over leveraging issues. We don't want to have that kind of issue. So you want to check the calendar, make sure that you're not trading the news or just before the news, you'll put your account under severe stress if you're not sure of what you're doing. We want to avoid that. I remember that we want to take the easy, no stress trades. We don't want to be in complicated positions when taking trades that changes our psychology and all of that while being at the charts as the live charts proceed. So what we can do is wait for the news to taper off, maybe 15 minutes to an hour after, and then look for a first bounce trade. I will also do a video to explain what that is. Is there any other setup day that coincides with the breakout at the initial balance, high or low? So example, inside day, a first red day, a first green day, three day count setup, three days previous hand low triggered setup, setups like those. I will also elaborate on those in different videos throughout this series, which I'll be doing after this. So examples of coinciding perfectly with, for example, our first day, first green day setup. You'll have a dump. So our first green day setup is, and I, this has its own video coming, when there you you have a day that dumps price, it can be several days as well. And then after the dump, you have uh, a day where price closes above the opening price of that day. So we have the opening price here. We have the closing price up here. So this makes it a first green day after the dump coming into that day. We have the open range high, the open range low. We have, as I had pointed out before, this should have been, now been the initial balance high and this is the initial balance low. Price breaks out, does a trend, continues a trend into the next day. And we the, the, the setup for the first green day, you look for the consolidation into the close of the day. So all of this tapering off of price, it extended into New York. Obviously, there was some news event here. You had a stop point, which is a false break reversal. So inducement to sell, triggering stops, triggering, uh, uh, yeah, triggering stops. So uh, stop pointing the, the stops and also triggering breakout traders. So a lot of people trapped under here. And, and then price went rapidly in the other direction. So that's one example. Tuesday extends the high of the range. Monday is still the low of the range. <clears throat> and then coming into Wednesday, this is how you can look at setups for the initial balance high and low or coming out of the initial balance high and low. Price <clears throat> pushes above the initial balance high. As I said, price is very sensitive to these areas. We had a false break reversal, so false break trap traders and then quickly move price in the other direction and we had our first red day set up here for the next day so this day sets the tone for the day after we had the pump we had the close below the opening price we had the consolidation into the close of day which is this range here so when i spoke about a measured move i meant uh you can have two times the range of this box here, or you can have three times, four times the range of this box here. You can have measured moves coming out of moves like this. You had a false break reversal, a stop hunt, trap traders again, quickly move price away. Notice how huge the candles are that are leaving here and how fast they move. 
no bricks, no, no, uh, all these are all bearish candles, all bearish candles coming down back to into the, into the low of this range. We had a retest of the range and price continued to fall off rapidly. So that's the idea of how you can look out for setups coming out of. So you had two setups on two consecutive days, which gave you significant moves. If you're doing a challenge, you would have passed the challenge probably on day one. Uh, pump into the highs. So this is coming out of Monday, the initial balance low. Uh, Tuesday may or may not have broken it or just about the same uh, place. But the high of Tuesday gives us the initial balance high. Price left that region, came down, consolidated, and gave us a pump and dump, uh, set up out of that consolidation and then consolidated again below the initial balance low. So the conclusion as it relates to the opening range and the initial balance is we want to be finding easy, no stress trades. The, the more of these we can find, the better it is. And if you can study these in your charts, understand the logics of how they play out and keep your charts as clean as you would have seen the ones here where there's no clutter, there, the only thing that I would have added to this are probably the the high and low, uh, just to indicate where the highs and the lows are in terms of previous days, previous week, and uh, the 100 pip box. But as I said, I don't want to confuse you with that as yet, but it can be as simple as this too because it's quite clear. I don't even really need much else on the chart. Yeah, so we're looking, we're looking for the easy setups they present themselves every week, like every single week we have three-day setups. As my mentor says, if you can count from one to three, you can make money. It's as simple as that. And we want to get 1% better every day. We want to keep it really, really simple. It's, it's just as simple as that. I hope this will help you to better understand uh, what I've been posting and to add to your basket of knowledge as it relates to trading. I am looking uh, to trade as stress-free as possible. There are so many instruments over 28, and if you're looking at indices and metals even more, just choose what works for you, whether it's a certain set of peers, whether you want to be trading those indices and metals, or you want to be trading currencies, however you want to be doing it, just choose what works for you and apply that. Don't choose what's working for somebody else that may not be working for you. Figure out what works for you, study that, understand it, be able to apply it in your charts when you're going live, have a good mindset when you're approaching the charts each day. Your, your lifetime chart performance is so important when sitting down to trade, because if you're distracted, if other things are happening around you, if you have other things on your mind, it affects your trading. So be very clear when you're approaching the charts on a daily basis, and that will help your lifetime performance significantly. Do whatever you need to do to have clarity while you're at the charts for lifetime. Affirmations, whatever it might be, just get your mind clear. Your lifetime performance, the lifetime performance is what lets down a lot of us each, a lot of the times, including myself. We know what to do, but when it's time to actually execute on a trade, we're either crippled by fear or we see it happening, but we are just not executing or we're executing late or too early. We know better, but we still don't do better. So um, things like that affect our trading and our psychology. And if our psychology is off, then the trading will be off. The profits will be off. The losses will be high. And the basic concept is we want to protect our capital, mitigate losses, and increase our profits. So at the end of the day, we want to be at our optimum level when we're sitting down to trade live. Again, I hope this helps you. I'll be coming with more with a series on best trade setups. I'll be going over the first green day, the first red day, the high and low of the weak trades, the first bounce trades, 
all of them, I'll be going over them. You can decide at the end of the day what works for you based on what will be shown to you. And uh, yeah, just, just choose a best trade setup and look for that every week and stick to that process. The process will get you through uh, all the time, every time. All right, have a great rest of the week. It's almost the weekend. We will see what tomorrow brings, probably more reversals. It can be continuations too, depending on what you're trading. But whatever it is, just make sure you're clear. You have clarity when you get to the charts. All right, take care. And remember, 1% better every day. And may the markets go with you. Take care.